a warm greeting from me to all my colleagues in the field of animal science all around the world. Today, I'm gonna talk about feed formulation models in poultry nutrition, and I'm gonna go through the uh, managerial targets chronologically. Uh, and we had a actually fruitful discussion on Engormix website with our colleagues all around the world on economy of poultry uh, feed formulation. And I decided to make a video and just update what we have talked so far. And I hope it could be a start to further discussion in this field. Okay. So the first thing that we need to pay attention in feed formulation practice is defining the target. If we look at the formulation targets chronologically, we can see it has been changed over the decades. For example, in 1990, it was uh, on least cost feed formulation. And I would say most of the feed meals all around the world are working based on least cost feed formulation again. In 2004, Dr. Guevara uh, presented maximum profit feed formulation. And in this case, in addition to ingredient cost, we need to pay attention to the product cost as well. It means that egg price or broiler meat price can affect our feed formula. And it's interesting because let's say if I'm gonna formulate a feed for a poultry farm, for example, they have layer chicks in 32 weeks of age. And today, the price of egg, let's say, is $2 per dozen. And after, I don't know, six months, I'm gonna formulate the same diet in the same situation, but we can see the egg price is increased or decreased. So what should be my formulation? Should it be same as a previous one? Yeah, if we, if we are formulating based on least cost feed formulation, yes. But if we are paying attention to maximum profit feed formulation, no, it won't be the same diet because the egg price will affect my feed formula. And it's interesting. So in 2010, uh, actually it's been mentioned that we need to formulate diets based on sustainable production. It means that we need to pay attention to environment, to economy, and to social concerns, animal welfare. So it's a higher level than the previous targets. And in 2020, uh, it's been mentioned that uh, we need to pay attention to the nutrient requirements based on individual animal level because nutrient requirement is usually defined based on a group or flock response, whereas it's been demonstrated that individual birds have different nutrient requirements because it's obvious, because they have their unique genome, their unique body composition, and also they are living in a certain environmental condition and this environmental condition can also affect the nutrient requirements. That's why a precision feeding system comes into play because with precision feeding system, uh, we can collect individual data and we can define nutrient requirements based on 
uh, individual data. So it's, again, one step higher than, excuse me, one step uh, higher than the previous goals. And also uh, in 2020, uh, especially in Europe, uh, the industry is paying attention to slower growth and meat quality. Because if we, if we consider animal welfare, it's, it's necessary to pay attention to have a slower growth, especially in broilers. Because with having higher growth rate, actually we are putting so much pressure on animals' physiology. And the result is obvious. We can see sometimes we are facing with some metabolic disorders or ascites. And it's because of the uh, higher growth rate in birds. So we need to consider all these stuff and then we can formulate a diet. So in feed formulation, actually we have three main steps. First, we're gonna define nutrient requirements. Second, we need to know our ingredients, uh, nutrient composition. And then we need to have a software or we can do that manually. We need to actually combine these ingredients in such a way to meet the nutrient requirements of the animal. So it's crucial to go through these steps carefully, precisely, to have a, a precise feed formulation at the end of the day. So the question comes to mind is, are nutrient requirements fixed or they are variable? For example, you can see a sample of a nutrient requirements table from manual guide. We can see there are some fixed values for energy, for nutrients, and if we want to formulate our diet based on fixed values, do you think it's worth or not? So if we are working based on breeder management guides, books, and NRC, yes, the nutrient requirements are fixed. But if we want to consider economical and nutritional variables, then the answer is no, because the nutrient requirements actually, actually depend on economical situation, body composition, environment, and we need to define a range for each nutrient, not just a fixed value. So actually to prove this idea, I'm gonna have a look at the method, one of the actually methods to determine uh, nutrient requirements in birds. So as you can see, to determine the nutrient requirements, usually we feed several uh, levels of nutrients. For example, in this case, it is total sulfur amino acids. And then we plot the performance uh, against the nutrient levels. And we can see the maximum response is here. I mean, the curve plateaus here. And based on this graph, we can see the requirement for total sulfur amino acids, TSAA, is 0.81 to reach the maximum response. So it is uh, the case that least cost feed formulation uses this method to reach the maximum response with the least cost. So do you think economically it's worth to reach the maximum response? I mean, is maximum response 
equal to maximum profit? No, not always. So that's why we need to define a different concept here. And it is uh, optimal response. So optimal response can be fall anywhere here in this graph. I mean, the distance between marginally deficient and maximum response. So we need to find optimum response. And optimum response actually is the highest return per input. So we can see nutrient requirement for maximum profit varies and it falls somewhere in here. But the question is, which level of total sulfur amino acid here would lead us to a maximum profit? That's where mathematical models uh, comes into play and help us. So we saw that nutrient requirements are not fixed and we have a range for every nutrient. For example, in case of metabolizable energy requirement, in laying hands, we have a range from 2684 to 2,992 kilocalorie per kilogram. Or in broilers, again, we are facing with a range. Or in case of total sulfur amino acids, it's the same story. So it shows us that we need to uh, use nonlinear mathematical programming to choose the most profitable uh, energy level and nutrient level from these ranges. So another uh, criticism that comes here is that the requirement depends on the response criteria being evaluated. For example, if I would have to define a nutrient requirement for maximum egg weight, maybe it would be different nutrient requirement from a scenario that I'm going to define based on a better cardiovascular system or skeletal health or maximizing the egg production. So that's why defining nutrient requirements based on a criteria is not the end of the world, is not a fixed thing, and we need to uh, challenge this idea. And as I said, it's where the mathematical models comes into play, and we need to select the most economical choice based on these models. I really love this idea from George Dancing, father of mathematical programming. He said, I work on planning under uncertainty. That's the big field as far as I'm concerned. That's the future. Maybe I'm the only one who says that. So actually in feed formulation, we are dealing with uncertainty uncertainty from economical standpoint, from nutritional standpoint, and we need to find an optimum uh, level. So that's why we need to develop feed formulation models and methods to deal with market variation, with variation in feed ingredients composition, and with all of them and or as i said in the first slide we need to have a, a sustainable production system and to do that actually to deal with market variation we have two main 
methods. This cost fit formulation that is based on linear programming models and maximum profit fit formulation that is based on nonlinear programming models. And I will show uh, some examples about this cost fit formulation and maximum profit fit formulation later on in this video. Or we can use margin of safety method uh, with stochastic programming to deal with variation in feed ingredients composition. Let's say I'm gonna buy soybean meal. So soybean meal on average has 44% crude protein, but this amount can be varied from a batch to batch. So at the end of the day, I will see I have variation in crude protein levels and I need to go beyond the average value and, defi and define the standard deviation for crude protein. For example, based on our uh, analysis on soybean meal, maybe we will end up with a value of 44 plus minus four. It means that the crude protein in soybean meal can be varied from 41% up to 40% uh, uh, if the standard deviation is four, it can be varied from 40% to 48%. So I will have an average, average value for protein and standard deviation for that average. And it is where the stochastic programming can help us to take this standard deviation into consideration in fit formulation. I will talk about margin of safety and stochastic fit formulation just a little bit at the end of uh, this lecture as well. So, least cost fit formulation the story of 1990. Actually, in least cost feed formulation, we want to combine the feed ingredients in such a way to meet the nutrient requirements of animal and have minimum cost. So it's the total idea of the least cost feed formulation. But the problem is there are some disadvantages for this method. The first one is, are we looking for maximum response or optimal response? As I said, and as I showed on this graph, it's a different idea. Maximum response is somewhere over here. But optimal response depends on the product price and depends on ingredient price and it is not a fixed value. So the optimal response, as I said, it's highest return per input. It's the first criticism that we can have for least cost feed formulation. And the other one is, as I said, we can have different amino acid requirements for maximizing response for body weight, FCR, breast meat, egg weight, egg production. I mean, the response criteria would affect nutrient requirements. And that's why we can't say there is a fixed nutrient requirements. No, it depends on response variable as well. And the most important criticism that we can have to least cost feed formulation is 
the cost position in this uh, formula, in margin formula. As you know, margin or profit is the subtraction of revenue and cost. So if we are looking for minimizing the diet cost, actually we are paying attention only to one side of the profit uh, formula and we are ignoring the rest of that and it's not good. So if we formulate our diets based on um, uh, maximum profit feed formulation based on nonlinear programming method. In that case, we will consider cost, minimizing cost, and we will consider the effect of revenue, the effect of product price, egg price, meat price on our feed formulation. So here I want to share the Excel sheet that I have created this as an example to compare least cost feed formulation with maximum profit feed formulation. So I can actually create another video, another tutorial video on how to make an Excel sheet to, to use a least cost feed formulation method or to use a maximum profit feed formulation method. So as you can see here, if I go to data and if I click on solver, so I can define my objective cell. So in this spreadsheet, actually my objective cell is cell V3. V3 is a dietary cost and I'm gonna minimize it. That's why I clicked on minimum and I'm gonna solve this uh, diet and you can see the solver found a solution and I can see the final formula over here. So, and I can see that the price has been minimized. It's a simple method and it works on uh, LP programming. If you saw here, uh, the solving method actually is simplex LP or linear programming. Okay, so let's get back to our slides and see what's going on with maximum profit with knowledge. So, so far we we have concluded that we need a shift in thinking from static to dynamic method because the response of birds to dietary energy diminishes with increasing nutrient density and it follows law of diminishing return. It means that as nutrient requirement increases, the performance also increases, but in a decreasing way. And that's why we need to um, define nutrient requirements more precisely. So in maximum profit feed formulation that was created by Dr. Guevara in 2004, actually they fed uh, broilers with different levels of energy and they, they plotted body weight and feed consumption against the energy level. And they defined, they calculated a prediction equation for 
body weight and feed consumption based on dietary energy. So if we look at margin formula, we can see margin or profit is uh, revenue minus cost. What is revenue? Revenue actually comes from product price times product amount. For example, egg mass times egg price. Or in broiler farms, it comes from the amount of broiler meat, chicken meat, times chicken price per kilogram or per pound. And what's the cost? Cost is feed cost times feed intake. As you know, in poultry business, feed actually is 70% or 75% of the total cost, total production cost. So that's why we put feed cost times feed intake in this formula. So the point is that instead of product amount and instead of feed intake, we need to put a prediction equation, a regression equation that can predict product amount and feed intake. Based on what? Based on dietary energy. As you can see here, um, we have substituted the product amount with its equation that comes from here, from the first graph. And also we have substituted the feed intake by feed intake prediction equation. So now our unknown variable is E. E is actually the dietary energy. We want to solve this equation in such a way to maximize the margin or profit. Actually, to do that mathematically, we need to take a deviation from this equation and put it equals to zero. In that case, we will get the max maximum amount for a left hand side of the model. It means for profit and we will maximize the uh, pro profit in the diet. So uh, we don't need to do that manually. Actually, Excel sheet can do that for us by using the solver function. So I'm gonna share my screen just to show you an example of maximum profit with formulation. So if I go to solver, I can see here my target cell is W2. I mean this cell. What's that? It's profit. And I have put the profit formula or margin equation over here in this cell. And I'm gonna maximize it. In the previous scenario, it was, uh, the target cell was dietary cost and I wanted to minimize it. But here, it's a different story. Here, I'm gonna maximize the profit in my feed formulation. So I have defined all the constraints and I have defined um, percentage of ingredient inclusion in my diet. And I'm using nonlinear method as a solving method. And if I click on solve, I can see the solver found the solution and all constraints 
and optimality conditions are satisfied. So let's say if I'm gonna change the, uh, now the dietary energy is 2.833 megacalorie per kilogram. I'm going to set it as default, 2.915 for um, laying hands. It is the result of a research that we did in 2011 on laying hands and we defined um, equation for uh, maximum profit actually the formulation. So let's say the price of egg would increase to 2.3 and I'm gonna use the solver to find an optimum level. I can see that the energy level changed a little bit and also my formula can be changed. Or let's say if I change the corn price to this amount and solve the diet again, Yeah, I can see the diet is accepting a higher energy than compared to the previous scenario. And again, my formula can be changed. Okay, so as I said, it's been done on broilers by Dr. Guevara from Peru and also by me in 2011 on laying hands. And we found uh, those prediction equations for egg mass and feed intake in uh, laying hands. And as I showed you, we substitute egg mass and feed intake uh, in margin formula by the equation, prediction equations that we found in our research. And I showed the spreadsheet that we used these equations to come up with a maximum profit heat formulation. So actually what we found is, this is the nonlinear programming model in maximum profit with formulation. And it is actually the model and the constraints that we need to pay attention. For example, let's say RHS is right hand side of the formula, is C is the dietary cost, and it is a sum product of uh, each ingredient's cost and the, the amount of each ingredient. Or let's say energy is same energy, the dietary energy is a sum product of ingre each uh, ingredient's uh, level and ingredient's uh, energy. So at the end of the day, we can define a range for energy and we can have our objective function here and we can maximize the profit or margin. So what we found was that when we, when we were using NLP method, nonlinear programming method in maximum profit fit formulation, the margin was higher than least cost fit formulation method or linear programming method. 
and to test the uh, software actually we changed the ingredients prices and product price i mean egg price by 25 percent we increased the prices by 25 percent and we decreased by 25 percent to see what happens with margin and we saw that in each scenario the diet was accepting a different energy level and consequently different nutrients level in within that standard range and we saw different margin values for each scenario and here we can see the effects of changing prices on diet formulation because every time we change the product price or ingredient price we saw that um, the for feed formula changed and we were able to actually predict the margin based on our equation and interesting thing was that profit was always higher for NLP method than the LP method and that's why we strongly recommend using maximum profit feed formulation in um, poultry feed formulation but as i said in my beginning of the speech it's not the final goal the final goal in 2020 is to look at individual nutrient requirements to prevent any nutrient excretion to the environment to have sustainable production to have a slower growth for example in broilers paying attention to animal welfare and if we consider those uh, managerial targets in our feed formulation it would be better than these formulas and least cost feed formulation or maximum profit feed formulation that i've talked in this video so far so last but not the least margin of safety and stochastic programming as I said, sometimes we are dealing with um, variability in nutrient composition of feed ingredients. And that's where we need to define standard deviation or SD for each nutrient in our ingredients. And what stochastic programming does is subtracting one half of SD from the mean value of nutrients. It can increase the probability of meeting an animal's requirement from 50% for a linear programming to greater than or equal to 69% for a linear program adjusted for MOS or margin of safety you can find more information from al hotan uh, paper in 2014 i believe uh, it was published in poultry science journal and you can see that for example this one is uh, an example on um, crude protein of soybean, soybean meal, and, and also corn. You can see uh, they defined mean value, average value of crude protein, as well as minimum and maximum amount of protein and its variance and its standard deviation. 
and these actually data are used by stochastic programming to formulate a feed to deal with uh, variability in nutrient composition of feed ingredients. And also Roche in 2007 had a paper describing margin of safety, application of margin of safety and stochastic programming in feed formulation. And as you can see in the spreadsheet, uh, in addition to having average values for protein, they had imported standard deviation as well. And then they let the software formulate the diet and considering the uh, variability in nutrient composition of ingredients. So our conclusion is we need to consider um, using uh, multiple feed formulation models to reach an optimum response to increase profit to have a, a sustainable production and also we can conclude that since product and ingredient prices often change that's why we don't have fixed uh, optimal nutrient density and actually the price of product and price of uh, energy and protein will dictate the, fi the final optimum uh, nutrient density in our diets. So that's the end of my speech for today. I will try to make other videos on um, creating Excel sheet to use a LP method or NLP method uh, to formulate diet based on least cost fit formulation or maximum profit fit formulation. And I'll post them on my YouTube channel. And I appreciate if you have any comments, you can use the comments area down there and uh, put your comments, constructive comments, and we can discuss that further. Okay, that's all I wanted to let you know today. And I'll see you over in the next episode. Have a good one.